In this video recording, I'm going to walk you through the calculations for our experiment number two. So experiment number two, the data that you should have recorded, the mass of the object in air. So my number is 16.520 grams. So again, three digits past the decimal, units of grams. Mass of the object submerged in our salt water solution, which is also called NaCl aqueous. My number is 11.105 grams, and the mass of the object submerged in alcohol aqueous, which is, my number is 11.420 grams. So every student will have their own unique student number. This number was assigned during experiment number one, and then you will download your student data from experiment two and use those numbers in your data table. We will start by looking at calculation number one. So in calculation number one, make sure you, in your calculations in your notebook, clearly write out number each question you're answering, show all of your work, include units, report your answers in their correct number of significant figures, and put a box around your final answer so it's easy for me to grade. Question one, calculate the volume of the aluminum cylinder used from the actual density of aluminum and its mass in air. So my mass in air is 16.520 grams. The density is 2.702 grams per mil. That's the same as 2.702 grams for every one mil. And this, I write that's as a conversion factor. I need my units of grams downstairs to cancel. So 2.702 grams for every one milliliter. My units of grams cancel. Thinking about sig figs, got five sig figs here and four sig figs here. So your answer then needs to have four sig figs and your units of milliliters. So do that same calculation with your numbers. And putting a box around your final answer. Question two, calculate the buoyancy force. Remember, our buoyancy force is the mass of the object in air. Minus the mass of the object submerged. So my buoyancy force for, this is 2A, for the salt would be 16.520 grams minus the mass submerged. So when I subtract, the units stay the same. Thinking about digits past the decimal, so I know I will need three digits past the decimal. So that would be my buoyancy force, which is my answer for 2A. Again, you'll put in your numbers and write down your final answers. I'm just kind of walking you through. For 2b, determine the experimental density of the salt solution from the buoyancy force and the volume. So I take my buoyancy force, let me subtract these, 16.520 minus 11.105, which gave me 5.414. And 16.520 divided by 2.702. My volume rounded to four sig figs, 6.114. So for 2b, my density, remember, is going to be the buoyancy force over the volume. And so keeping track of sig figs, right, always important, and four, four. So my final answer with four significant figures, 0 0.8857 units, grams per milliliter. Put a box around my final answer. Question three, you're told according to the CRC handbook of chemistry and physics, 
the actual density of a 10% salt solution at 25 degrees Celsius, so just room temperature, is 1.0726 grams per milliliter. Calculate the error and percent error of your calculated density. So your true density, or the actual density, is given here, and my calculated density is the one you answered in 2B. So I made my numbers up, so my density is quite off. Yours should be a little bit closer. You're going to use the directions for error and percent error that you were given in experiment number one. Show all of your work, box your final answers. Question 4A and B are very similar to 2A and B, but you're going to be calculating the buoyancy force by taking the mass in air minus the mass submerged. And then your density the same way, buoyancy force over volume for 4B. And then question five is just like three, except you're given a new actual density because we're looking at the alcohol solution, 0 0.926. So please, when you're performing these calculations, keep in mind, right, sig figs, digits past the decimal. I need to see all of your answers with sig figs. And with the correct sig fix. Um, so hopefully this was helpful for experiment number two. After watching this video, log in to Zoom during hours and I am happy to help you out with additional questions based on your specific data set.